there's a bird out there that is singing. What kind of bird are you? There are two birds. They look like finches. Huh? That's very exciting. Hello, I'm Naomi. I'm a singer who sews, and today I'm going to show you basically how not to turn your late medieval kirtle pattern into a bra. Let me start out by saying that this is a great idea. You should definitely do it, but you should do it right. As I've mentioned before in my Langberg bra video, I hate modern bras. They wear out too quickly and the price for support is discomfort. Digging in at my waist, pulling down on my shoulders, generally not having enough support all around for my big old boobalooies. <laughs> so ever since about 2017, I've been obsessed with late medieval bust supporting kirtles, primarily because they spread out the weight of my breasts over a much larger surface area, so I'm not having so much back trouble or a pressure point at my under bust line or too much pulling on my shoulders. Not only that, but would you look at the shape my green kirtle gives me? Hot damn. So I'm gonna try and toss away a few more of my stretchy bras and make a linen bralette a la bust supporting shift using the pattern for my green kirtle. I would now like to share some do's and don'ts for you to keep in mind if you decide to attempt this project. Do press your linen before you cut. I'm using the same linen I used for my Langberg bra a couple of months ago. Do use a well-fitting kirtle pattern. Mine was made back in November using the La Cotte Sample curved front draping tutorial. I'm modifying my pattern into a bra shape by marking a horizontal line across the front pattern pieces at the bottom of the underbust band. Then I'll match up the side seams and make horizontal lines across the back pieces. My lines aren't meeting at the center back, so I'm just going to split the difference and add in a bit of curve to smooth out the waistline. Do trace your pattern pieces using Frixion pen, and label all the pieces so you don't get confused. For clarity's sake, all of my marks are on the right side of the fabric. I cut a half inch seam allowance on most of the sides of the pattern pieces, but along the bottom edge I allowed an inch of seam allowance for a two turn hem. I cut no seam allowance along the center back edge because I figured a two turn half inch hem turned back directly from the seam line would give me about a two inch lacing gap. That brings me to my first don't. Don't assume a two inch lacing gap will be enough on a garment made from linen. You'll end up finishing the edges using a two-turn hem, stitching down a length of twill tape, and making upwards of 20 eyelets before trying it on and realizing there's not any lacing gap at all because linen relaxes a ton when you put it under stress. But back to things that work. Do use French felt seams on all of your major seams. This is a very strong seam, which you will definitely need if you're wrangling big ol' boobaloobies like mine. It takes three passes with the sewing machine to make this type of seam. First, pin the pieces wrong sides together and stitch a quarter inch or so outside the seam line. Press this open, then pin right sides together and stitch along the seam line. Press the seam allowance to one side and top stitch it down in one final pass. Don't try to put a zipper on a curved seam, even if putting the garment on would be super easy if you did. And yet, I tried it. The separating zipper I had was too long for the front seam, so I marked a new length. To block the zipper pull from coming off, I stitched over the coil several times at the mark using fire button thread before trimming the zipper and removing the excess coil. When attaching the zipper, I even thought about the zipper pull making a bump under my t-shirt and attached it inside out. As predicted, the zipper did not like the angles and curves of the center front of the bra. I ended up having to rip the zipper out, shorten it again, and move it to the left side seam. On the bright side, a French felled center front seam worked out great, so I recommend you do French fell curved seams. If at your fitting, 
There is no lacing gap where you expect there to be one. Don't say... Guess it's lacing clothes. That's fine with me. I don't mind. After you wear the bra for several hours, the linen will relax even more, and you'll end up having to cut off the entire lacing panel and make 22 more eyelets in the space of a single afternoon, because you're on a deadline. On a similar note, do make lucid cord for your lacing panel, but don't tie it off before you readjust said panel for a larger gap, because then it will be too short and you'll have to use an inferior cord you bought at Joanne. When it comes time to finish the neck and armhole edges, do trim off any seam allowance if you're planning to bind the edges. You could also do a rolled hem. Don't, however, bind a ravel-prone linen with half-inch twill tape because it's not wide enough and will not stay put. Do use a binding that is wide enough, even if it happens to be random extra wide cotton bias tape you have in your stash. Even with all these frustrating mistakes, I still ended up with a garment that works, but final fitting Naomi has a few thoughts. <sighs> Finally, that only took like four weeks longer than I hoped it would. Super comfy. I'm ready to fight. Also, it's so much less bouncy than any of my other stretchy bras. I love it so much. Next time though, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Just make a supportive shift the way they did it in the olden days with side lacing that ties in the back and leave off the skirt. Do that instead of what I did. Don't try to, don't try to fuck with the zipper. That actually is more difficult than the side lacing thing. Anyway. And there you have it. All the mistakes I made while trying to make a kirtle pattern into a bra. I have worn this a few times since that final fitting video, and the lacing gap has gotten a little bit smaller as the linen relaxed a little bit more. If this keeps happening, I will be able to use the lucid I made specifically for this project instead of the cheap cord I got at Joanne. I definitely want to make another one of these, but with side lacing similar to my L bra, I have a feeling that'll be a lot easier to put on than the side zipper I have on this one. But other than that, I just, I really like this one. It's very, it's like a, it's like a nice hug and I want more. I want to get rid of all my stretchy bras. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you use this video as a resource to make your own curl bra, I hope that it eases your journey and helps you make some of those more challenging design decisions. I also hope you'll show me on Instagram or in a private message. If you want to see more history bounding, as well as music history and historically adequate costuming, I hope you'll subscribe. I upload on the last Monday of the month, and I'd be happy to have you along on my adventures. See you next time.